affected by Geometrical, who got a bigger start as the tapes went up than he ended up winning by. It was a bit of a farce. Um, he should be capable of better. Based on the Worcester defeat of Al Zarakan, that reads OK. Yeah. He was a multiple winner, um, but the market not exactly speaking for him. George Mallory being asked to take well, 11 to 5, just above 2 to 1, about a horse who's yet to win a race and was, albeit by a well hand, really well-handicapped horse in uh, at the track last time in King Fast, was brushed aside and sort of just plugged on. Not heard of any omitting of hurdles? No, Rich, I think confirmed there are none. We're going to be yeah. very OK in this one. Yeah. I think it did have a material effect on our previous race, certainly more so than it had done with Anne the New dominating the chase. And Anne the New, the angle, of course, we've got Super V8 at the top, Laura Morgan looking for a double with Adam Wedge and fairly similar profiles. Not as big a handicap dropper, but has been given a bit of a chance and he's freshened up again. So they are being called forward. They'll have eight flights to jump this time in our sixth race of the evening. Being led towards the start by Tonix. Tonix is looking like jumping out in front. And they're off. And uh, Tonix has the early lead by two and a half lengths already in the download the rhino.bet app handicap hurdle and leading to the first of eight flights. Tonix and Charlie Todd leading the way to George Mallory. And then the stars on the jacket, Supreme Yates. The blue silks following George Mallory is Prospect House. And they are followed by No Recollection. And No Recollection is in front of the grey Royal Steel, the best turned out winner in sixth position in the early stages as Amy Murphy's Tonix leads by two and a half to three to the lightly weighted George Mallory, who's sharing second with the top weight Supreme Yates. And then No Recollection, now running for the Worcester Racing Club, formerly a winner for Alan King. Now with Sam England and running in a share of fourth in the sheepskin noseband with Prospect House and Danny McMenamin. And Royal Steel is in sixth place, but the game plan uh, very plain for Tonix, jumping out and trying to make every yard of the running. And in front by about four to George Mallory and Lewis Dobb in second. And Supreme Yates in third. So now coming to the second. And an athletic leap at it by Tonix in front of George Mallory, who's running a bit keenly in second as they come to the third. Tonix to George Mallory. Supreme Yates just went left and was a little bit untidy. Prospect House now keeping him company. No recollection is in fifth position, and Royal Steel is still in sixth, about seven lengths behind the leader, and just bumped along there by Connor O'Farrell. So one circuit to go, and it's Tonix that leads by about three. Supreme Yates has made progress again, having lost a bit of ground at the last obstacle to be in second position, just ahead of George Mallory, with no recollection following, with Prospect House and Royal Steel is last of all as they now make the entrance to the back straight. And still Tonix is out in front and very much unpestered. And three lengths ahead of Supreme Yates. George Mallory is less than a length away on the outside in third. The first obstacle in the back. A good jump there from no recollection. Almost jumped his way into a share of second position as George Mallory now drops to fourth. Prospect House and Royal Steel still at the final two as they now approach the middle hurdle in the back straight as they do so. Tonics wasn't quite so fluent at that one, but still running in the lead to in second place. George Mallory has got that position back again. No recollection. Supreme Yates is pushed along and now back in fourth. The final one in the back. Tonics gets from one side to the other. Ahead of George Mallory, no recollection. Supreme Yates is pushed along. Prospect House on the outside. And Royal Steel still with work to do from where he is. But uh, Tonics with the initiative here, looking to show some old sparkle and return to form. And she's in front by about five to George Mallory in second place. No recollection is in third. Prospect House is fourth. Royal Steel has made a place, but is driven in fifth. And Supreme Yates is in last. So Tonics is out clear. And in front by five lengths to George Mallory in second. No recollection is pushed along only in third place. And Prospect House is now challenging him. So Tonics going for home here. George Mallory is uh, trying to chase, is getting 
Ooh, quite a lot of weight, 24 pounds from the mare in front as they come to the second last. Prospect House, also off a lightweight, is staying on. Tonics at two out, gets over it. Five clear of George Mallory and the running on Prospect House, who now goes into second place. Tonics at the final flight, jumps it well, but only clear by about four to Prospect House. And now Charlie Todd has to get to work. He could do with a winner, Charlie, but Prospect House is chasing very hard and has got to within a length and a half. Tonics needs to find again, but and he, she is is doing that as well and is getting the better of Prospect House and the well-supported Tonics forges away and makes all for Amy Murphy and Charlie Todd. Prospect House second, third was close in the end as Supreme Yates got a second wind to challenge George Mallory for that. Money talks, doesn't it? Well back Tonics, 17 to 2 to 100 to 30, daughter of Nathaniel and found more when challenged. If you'd backed this and joined in the gamble, Tonics, you'd have been concerned half a furlong out, but you needn't be because Prospect House couldn't get by Tonics, who found more for pressure under a strong Charlie Todd and lands the money. She might not be straightforward, but she was on a good day today. She really was, and I think she she gave a real sign of that pre-race. I'm still not sure quite as a lamb is a phrase, but I'm going with it again. Um, she was good as gold beforehand, yeah. completely relaxed, and she was far more relaxed in the race. I think going this way around has helped her because she's had yeah. a tendency to hang right. She almost does it late on. With a filly like her who puts so much into her races, my assumption is always that once they've been closed down, unless the runner-ups had to do a load of running to mm. get there, they're probably going to be vulnerable. But to be fair to her, she's ended up winning by further than she probably was clear half a furlong out. So yeah. she's picked up again. It was better again from Prospect House. There was also encouragement from No Recollection. He went as well as any bar the winner for a long way, but he's probably needed the run based on how he's weakened. I'm sure the Englands will get something more out of him. Supreme Yates just seemed to find the test too sharp. He was off his feet from four out and does some good late work to chin the, the rather expensive to follow George Mallory and Connections obviously left with a mountain to climb, aren't they, Peter, to try and get a win? Great pun, great pun. Now tell me this, Prospect House Connections will be frustrated to run into a ongoing tonic, yeah. a good day tonic. Yeah, yeah, that is, it's always annoying, isn't it, when you bounce you bounce back or you get the sort of mm. performance you think mm. your horse is capable of, but something revives to, to beat you. But she's just been on a in a rich vein of form today. Full of enthusiasm, but not too headstrong. Prospect House hung in behind late on. He'd done a fair bit of running to get there, but he's shown that Mark's in the 70s. It should be a bit of a formality for him.